This book tells me that it is the spontaneous disintegration of atomic nuclei with the emission of usually penetrating radiation or particles. Yes. This is an atom. It consists of protons and neutrons, except hydrogen, which live in a nucleus and electrons which exist around it. And this is a nucleus. So, for now, forget about the atomic electrons. The penetrating radiation we're talking about is gamma radiation. This is radioactivity because it comes from within the nucleus. Technically, X-rays don't come from within the nucleus, so technically, X-rays are not radioactivity. So, for now, we'll ignore them. Radioactivity is most commonly released when excited nuclei give off energy to become more stable. This is radioactive decay. The simplest you can get with this is alpha, beta, gamma. For this video, it's going to stay simple, but keep in mind, this is not it. In alpha decay, you have a large excited nucleus which kicks out two protons and two neutrons, the alpha particle, or a helium nucleus, same thing, in order to become more stable. Because this nucleus has given off two protons, this means the atomic number will decrease by two. And when an atom changes element because of something funny happening inside the nucleus, this is called transmutation. Although alpha particles are the most ionizing out of the three, they penetrate the least and their range is the shortest. You can shield from them with paper. Beta decay can really take place in three ways. Negatron emission, po negatron emission, positron emission, electron capture. But now let's stick to the first one. In negatron emission, a neutron is turned into a proton, and a high-speed electron, the beta particle, is given off. In all three ways, a neutrino, in this case an anti-neutrino, is also given off, which carries away the remaining momentum and energy from the conversion. But to show the basics, it can be forgotten, as it doesn't change what we get in the end. In negatron emission, because we've got another proton, this means that the atomic number increases by one. Beta particles are smaller and can travel further and penetrate more than alpha particles, but can be shielded with a few millimetres of aluminium. Gamma decay usually occurs after alpha or beta decay, as after those decays, the nucleus can be left in an excited state. But it can also happen by itself when the nucleus is in an isomeric state. Here, the nucleus is in an excited state, the metacerebral isomer, and will give off gamma radiation to become less excited. Since gamma radiation is the most penetrating and has the longest range, it requires a very dense material like lead or concrete to shield from it. So basically that's enough for the basic basics. Keep an eye out for more videos where I'll go into more detail, but for now, goodbye.